um, as I said before, it is very unusual for a New Yorker to be honored this way in New England. Tell, tell us a little bit um, about what kind of racing you did out here. Well, I think probably the reason that I was lucky enough to become a member of the New England Auto Racers Hall of Fame was that probably my record at Stafford Springs when Stafford Springs was still dirt. I think that track could have been built for me. I won the first race there that I ever ran in a strange car and I think I won more than 50 percent of the races that I ran there in, in the two-year period in which I was track champion both times. So yeah, I did race in other places in, in New England here and there, but never steadily. Mm -hmm. So I think that I have to thank Stafford Springs for the opportunity to be here today talking to you. One of the things that, uh, well, there are many things, Bill, that were so incredible about the era in which you excelled so much because it was a tough time. Um, it wasn't the uh, typical NASCAR modified thing or a Winston Cup thing now that there might be 30 or 40 races a year. You just went on the road all summer and raced constantly, meaning that you were racing on both dirt and asphalt, often on the same weekends. And that must have been incredibly trying. What was it like? Well, it was nice after we, we found uh, some asphalt cars to run. It was not nice before that. When I ran, you know, I was born and brought up on dirt, you might say, in the racing business, and ran only dirt in the early years because that's all there was. And when, when asphalt came to New York State, we didn't try to build a, an asphalt car because we didn't recognize the need for it. And I tried to run asphalt with a dirt car and, and quite unsuccessfully, unfortunately. Eventually, we, we did get ourselves a couple of, or an asphalt car and became, I think, equally as successful on asphalt as we were on dirt. Uh, in 1967, which is the last year that I ran NASCAR, I won all three track championships that I, uh, of the tracks that I ran that year, and two of them were asphalt and one was dirt. Fond of being the, the dirt, Albany, Saratoga, and Utica, Rome being the asphalt. So, one or the other. I, I guess I never met a racetrack that I didn't like. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's interesting. So that um, at uh, Malta on Friday nights and Utica on Sunday nights, you would have raced against virtually everybody who's in the New England Hall of Fame. Well, maybe not everybody, but many, many of those who are in the New England Hall of Fame. And I mean, I made some very good friends and with the folks from New England, people I really enjoy. Was there any difference in the sophistication of the cars or were the dirt cars as technical towards dirt and the asphalt cars as technical towards asphalt? In those days, in the beginning of the time when Utica Rome Speedway and Albany Saratoga Speedway came into being as asphalt tracks, there was a good deal of difference between a dirt car and an asphalt car. And the, uh, the the boys from New England were always superior until the boys from New York began to build asphalt cars themselves and then it, everything evened out the way it would normally even out between good drivers, you know, the New York boys won and the New England boys won and it was a, there was a great deal of difference in the technology to begin with. Uh, Freddie Rosner came to uh, Sherburne, New York where my car was located. And of course, as you know, Freddie Rosner is in the Hall of Fame, if I'm not mistaken, because he was a great builder and a great mechanic. And he built us two cars. He built us a dirt, a dirt car, and here we were dirt car people. And he built us an asphalt car, and they were very similar. They, they, there wasn't as much difference as one would have expected. Mm -hmm. And they both turned out excellently, mm -hmm. excellently. So they, but they both had the same technology used in building them. There was just a few odds and ends of difference. And, uh, as an example, I sat astride in the dirt car with my foot over here on the throttle. And uh, I used the left foot brake in the uh, asphalt car, right foot brake in the dirt car. But I could jump from one to the other and never know the difference. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Freddie Rosner is in the Hall of Fame um, as well. And um, we also had, you'll remember, Bill, uh, a sidebar about him in the Fonda book doing that. He mm -hmm. was yes. a very interesting guy in that he would go to someone's garage, such as yours, and build a car for a flat rate of $250 a week. Mm -hmm.
and expenses. Yeah, and expenses. I'm not sure the way that worked. That's still working down at the Hendrick operation down south. <laughs> those were the days. Those were the days. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Bill, do you get out to the races here in New England ever? Uh, it's such a treat to see you here at this particular thing. I know you come up from Florida for a month each winter, er, each summer. Do you ever get to out this way? Well, I guess I haven't. Mm -hmm. Not that I wouldn't like to, but I have frequented the tracks that I was most familiar with and I ran on the most. So when I, if I'm here for three weeks, I don't get that many chances to, to move around, and I do tend to stay with the, the Fondas and the Albany Saratogas and the Utica Romes and Le Lebanon Valley. I, I did make a show at Lebanon Valley this year. So I got close to New England when I, was, when I was at Lebanon Valley, but one time when I get a little bit more time than I have now, we'll probably visit over in the New England also. Sir? Well, I know that you were here last night at uh, New London Waterford, and we were terribly disappointed for Terry Eames that he had yet another rain out. Um, you would really enjoy this SK Modified show, and um, I'll tell you, everybody sure would have enjoyed seeing you go Wimbledon. Well, thanks for coming up. Thanks very much for having me. I've enjoyed, I've enjoyed being here today a great deal, just to see friends from, from those good old days that we're talking about. Thanks again.